I'm Adani, I'm the designer for Nemi Patterns number 2064. Uh, this pattern goes from size 34 to 52, which accommodates up to a size 48 inch waist or 122 centimeters waist. So this uh, rain jacket is actually made up of a uh, crop top jacket and um, a vest. And the crop top attaches to the vest uh, via snaps along the um, uh, shoulders slash uh, front facing here. Um, the version that I'm making today is made from a dry oil skin. So it's cotton that's been pre-treated to be um, water resistant, but it's not necessarily uh, waterproof. Yeah, so let's get started. For the sew along today, I'm using this uh, dry oil skin fabric. This is a cotton fabric that's been treated um, with some sort of um, water resistant coating and uh, it's quite crisp now and it holds a crease or wrinkle really well um, but I also can't necessarily uh, press it with high heat and if I wash it I'm supposed to retreat it um, so I'm going to avoid using high heat but because it's so crisp I know that it will hold a fold or press really well so I'm not too worried about missing out on that. Um, in terms of fabric pieces we'll need, um, if you want to make uh, the jacket like it appears on the pattern envelope, you'll need uh, several different pocket styles. So um, I'm going to use two different fabrics. I'm going to use this yellow one, and I'm going to use this off-white one. Um, for the yellow fabric, I'm going to use that for the vest portion, and the white fabric will be for the jacket portion. Uh, so in terms of pockets, I'll need three of the small size pockets for the vest. I'll need one of the medium size pocket for the vest. And I'll also need three of the large size pockets. In terms of pocket flaps, I'll also need corresponding um, medium or small and medium pocket flaps. Um, so that's uh, three small and or six for th three small pockets and two pieces for the one medium pocket. And for the large pockets, they're going to have a zipper closure, so we'll need this little like flap or gusset for the for each pocket. Um, so I'll need three total. For the jacket portion of the pocket, um, I think there's going to be one small pocket and two medium pockets, and they're uh, matching pocket flap pieces. So two for one small pocket and four for um, the two medium pockets. There will also be inseam pockets on the vest, so I'll need four pieces total. I'm just going to use this lightweight cotton I have in my stash. Um, in terms of interfacing, I'm going to use the same cotton fabric I have for my inseam pockets. Um, and because this is, um, I can't use high heat in this fabric, I'm going to use a sewn interfacing, and I think um, this, light in, this lightweight cotton will be fine for that. So in total, I'll need three of the medium-sized pocket flap pieces for the interfacing, and I will also need um, four, I think, yeah, four small pieces. For the jacket portion of this pattern, uh, you'll need four of the hood pieces because it will be a self lining And then you'll also need two, two of the center hood pattern pieces. And you'll need um, two of the uh, brim pieces. Now the pattern envelope says two, two brim pieces and uh, two interfacing pieces, but this fabric is um, pretty stiff and I don't wanna sew through all those layers. So I'm just going to do a self interfacing. So I cut out three of my um, oil skin fabric for the brim. Uh, and for the uh, jacket body, you'll need two front pieces. And I've cut out the interfacing here uh, from a lightweight cotton that I had in my stash. Um, you'll also need a back piece uh, cut on the fold. You'll need a uh, back facing piece and um, interfacing for that uh, pattern piece. And you'll need two sleeve pieces. 
for the vest portion of this uh, jacket, you'll need two front pieces. And I've already cut out the interfacing from this uh, lightweight cotton. And you'll need one back piece cut on the fold. And I've also cut out some interfacing for this pattern. Uh, for notions, you'll need uh, some heavy duty snaps. Um, a separating zipper for the vest. So my vest will be yellow, um, and I kind of find a matching color, but I think this off-white will be fine. Uh, depending on how many of a large size pockets you'll make, you'll need um, enough zippers for them. So I got uh, three zippers because I'm going to make three of the large size pockets, and not, they're not all the same size, uh, but I'm going to chip them down a size. Uh, there's an optional uh, D-ring that you can put on if you want, uh, and the pattern asks for a 3 quarter inch sized D-ring. Um, instead of using a cross grain ribbon, I just cut out a, a strip of um, my fabric uh, from a piece of scrap fabric, and then I'm going to fold it into the right size for the um, D-ring strap. For today's sew along, I think I'll first show how I add the uh, pocket placement markings onto both the vest and the jacket. And then I'll show only show how to sew uh, one of the medium pockets and one of the large pockets um, because the construction for the small and medium pockets will be the same. And it'll be up to you uh, how many you want to do. To start, uh, I'm going to take one of my front vest pieces and one of my front jacket pieces. Um, here I've already folded away the hem, so this is I know this is how long the finished edge will be. Um, I'm gonna line them up against the along the inner shoulder seam. And this will tell me where approximately where the um, jacket portion will sit over the vest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna first make a marking there. So now I know where the bottom of my jacket or, uh, hits the vest, and I want my large zippered pocket to be um, comfortably below that line. And I also want my small and medium pockets that are on the, um, that are on the vest to be above that line because I want them to be hidden away when the uh, jacket's worn over the vest. So let's work on the large zippered pocket first. Here is one of the large zippered pockets, and I don't know if I can, you can see this on camera, um, but I've already marked in all of the uh, fold lines on this pocket. So I know that between this line and this line, and this line and this line is the finished size of my pocket. And if I measure that real quickly, that is nine inches, and a little over six inches. So I wanna make sure that there's um, a space below this line that I marked where the jacket ends that this pocket will fit. Um, but I also want it to be maybe a little bit below this line so that um, the jacket edge isn't on top of the zipper. And I also want it to be um, a little further away from the um, hem, so I'm not accidentally sewing through it when I uh, finish the bottom of this vest. So to make things comfortable, I think I'll just mark something two inches away from this hem. And I think I'll mark something maybe an inch down from where the vest ends. And between those lines is eight inches, so that's good. Um, and I think I want my pocket to be, you know, maybe an inch away from the side edge so that it doesn't get caught in the seam when I sew the side seam. And I want to be 
let's say like two inches away from the center edge. That way it doesn't, I don't have to deal with it when I sew in the zipper. Um, now I'm going to just place my ruler. I have one edge, straighten it out. And it looks like this width is perfectly nine inches for this size. Um, but I do have some wiggle room because I think, you know, two inches away from the center is um, pretty generous. So it looks like I want my left corner to be right here. I'm going to double check that six inches isn't too close, too close to the hem. Okay, and I still have some distance. Um, so I know that the left corner of this uh, pocket will be um, right here. So I'm just gonna draw um, nine inches this way and a uh, so rectangle that's nine inches this way and six inches this way. So here's my first large pocket. Um, and I hope you can see it off camera, but you know, I, I guess chalk doesn't show up too well. Um, and now I'm going to work on the uh, pockets that go on the upper half of the vest. If you want to make this jacket asymmetrical like it is on the pattern envelope, you'll need to make uh, different markings for each side of the pattern. Um, and so as it is on the um, uh, envelope, it is it has two small pockets on the right side of the vest. Um, so I'm already working on the right side of the vest. Now I'm going to try and fit in two of these small pockets. So I still have this line here, which represents the bottom hem of the jacket portion. And I want to make things, or I want to make sure the bottom of my um, pocket is a little bit higher than this marking. Um, this side of the jacket will have two small pocket pieces. And um, from quickly measuring it, um, or measuring the thinner si size, I know it's about four inches wide and um, about four and a half inches tall. So I'm going to get out my ruler. I'm going to first mark, let's say, another inch away from where that jacket hem is. That's probably the lowest where I'll want my small pocket. Um, and another consideration is uh, the pattern piece does have a uh, snap button markings, so I want to avoid putting my pocket over that. I also want to avoid putting my pocket inside the seam allowance of, um, well, anywhere along this pattern. So I've quickly folded the uh, small pocket into its finished size, and I'm going to use this to estimate where I want my uh, pocket placements to be. So if this line here is the bottom edge of the jacket, then I probably want the bottom edge of the small pocket to be at least an inch above that. That way it doesn't poke out from under the jacket when I wear the jacket over the vest. I think this is a good place for the first one. And I also want to make sure there's enough room above this for the pocket flap. So maybe I'll estimate the line here. And I'm going to add a second small pocket flap, maybe around here. Oh, sorry, I just knocked the camera. Um, I want to make sure that it's between these two snap placements and that it's not too close to the seam allowance of the shoulder. I think this is a good spot for it. So I'm going to mark these uh, placements in and then we'll move on to the left side of the vest. So the right side of the vest has the placement markings on it now. I have one large pocket uh, and two, one, two small pockets. Um, so I'm just going to copy the large pocket placement over to the 
um, left side of this pattern. And I'm also going to make sure the bottom edge of my small pocket on the right side will match the bottom edge of the medium pocket on the left side. Um, so I'll just do that off camera and then uh, I'll move on to marking the pockets for the back side of the vest. Hello, um, so I kind of find the clip where I recorded uh, how I marked the pattern placements for the back side of the vest. Um, so I'm just showing you the finished garment um, to show you the relative placement. So on the left side of the back vest, I just lined up the top and bottom of the large zippered pocket from the front. And for this small angled pocket, I just made sure that it laid below the line of where the jacket would be. And I just gave it a slight angle. That way I could more comfortably reach behind my back and get into the pocket. So what I have here is the um, front left piece of the uh, jacket portion of this pattern. And I've already folded in the facing and the bottom hem just to get an idea of the finished size of the jacket. And I've also folded in, I've also taken a medium pocket and a small pocket and folded them into their finished size. So for the pocket placements of this, um, one of my main concerns is making sure that the bottom edge of the pocket isn't so close to the hem that it will that'll get caught in the um, stitching of the hem when I stitch that down. So I know that the hem will be probably an inch and a quarter or maybe just an inch from the bottom, but I'm gonna do an inch and a half just to give myself a little more wiggle room. And in terms of distance away from the center um, or the, the front center, I think I'm gonna do two inches like I did for the vest. Let me make sure. Okay, and if I place pocket approximately there, I still have a lot of wiggle room close to the arm side. So I think this will be a good spot for the medium sized pocket, but there's also gonna be a um, small size pocket. So I think I'll just stick that one maybe maybe a little further away from the neck and closer to the arm side. I mean, I want to make sure there's some distance between the bottom edge of the small pocket and the top edge of the medium pocket because there will be pocket flaps. Um, maybe a little higher. Okay, so this looks okay to me. Maybe I can line up this, the edges of these. Okay, I think this is good. Yeah, I'll, I, I think I want these further edges um, to be lined up. So I'm going to mark these in real quick. I think I'll just mark the corners. Well, make sure, let me make sure it's straight first. Okay, so I'm just going to mark the corners of the pockets. And then I'm going to uh, transfer the markings of this um, medium pocket to my uh, the right side of this jacket pattern. So I've marked on um, a rough idea of where I'm going to put the pocket. I don't know how easy the chalk will translate to camera, and I apologize for that. But I'm a little resist resistant to using pencil on this one. I know I can't can't wash it. Um, so the other side of the, the right side of this jacket pattern piece will only have this medium sized pocket. Um, and I think I want those pockets to be symmetrical. 
So I'll just transfer these markings over um, off camera, and then we'll move on to constructing and adding on the pockets. For today's sew along, I think I'm only gonna film the construction for one medium pocket and one of the large zipper pockets um, because the construction for the small and medium ones will be um, the same. So here I've already finished the edges of this pocket with the zigzag stitch, and I've already marked um, the fold lines on this pattern piece. So the first thing I want to do with this uh, pocket is to fold down the top edge and sew um, maybe like one and a quarter inch away from that to um, hold down the top hem. But I'm not going to stitch across the entire edge of the pocket. I think I'll just stitch between the two, one, two inner marking lines. And that way I can trim away the excess fabric and reduce some of the bulk. I'm also going to um, sew down the uh, bottom dart of this pocket. And I'm also going to sew uh, the pocket flaps together. So here's my interfacing and my two um, pocket flap pieces. I've also drawn on the stitch line for this pocket flap, um, and I usually do that for any curved edge because it helps me sew the curve a little bit more neatly. Um, so I, I forgot that I said I was gonna not going to sew the entire edge, so I had to do a little bit of um, unpicking. Um, but the reason I don't sew across the entire edge is because I want to cut off some of this excess fabric um, and reduce some of the bulk that will be that I'll get from stacking and folding so many layers of fabric. Um, and so now I'm just going to fold the pocket in along the edges where the pattern has suggested it. So now my medium pocket is all um, folded up. And you can see here that's now quite uh, three dimensional. And so this further folded edge is what we're going to sew down to the actual pattern piece. Um, and this folded edge right here, um, you can top stitch it if you want, but I think I'm going to leave leave it um, unsewn because I, I think I prefer the look of not having the top stitching here. So when it comes to sewing the pocket bag onto the pattern piece, I'm only going to do one of the three sides at a time um, because this has a lot of like three-dimensional shape. And it would be a lot easier if I just sew one edge, break, uh, maneuver things around, sew that edge, break, maneuver things around, and then sew it down that last edge. So I'm going to start with this first edge. So I've sewn down the first side of this pocket bag, and I haven't completely pinned down the second side yet because I want to add in um, the D-ring, the optional D-ring. So here's a strip of uh, scrap fabric that I've just uh, cut and sewed into this three-quarter inch wide strip. Now I'm just going to loop it through my D-ring, 
I don't need all this extra fabric, but I'll, I'll just trim it later. Now I'll just put it under the bottom edge of this pocket. If I keep it kind of close to the, or as close to the middle of the pocket as I can. Okay, so I'll finish pinning this and then sew it up. So I've just finished sewing down the second um, edge of this pocket, and now I just have one more edge to pin down um, and sew. Now my pocket bag is attached on the th two sides and the bottom. Um, and I forgot to say this, or film it, I mean, but I ended up uh, picking and then pushing up the D-ring strap a little bit higher because I was worried it would uh, show from under the jacket portion of this piece when it was all done. So I just pushed that up a bit and then I trimmed the excess of strap inside the pocket. So now my pocket is on and I'm gonna now take the second folded edge that we have and then fold that down on one side and do the same thing on the other side. And now I have my cargo pocket. Um, looks mostly good. I think it's a little, yeah, if I press it flat, Actually, I think it looks fine from head on. Okay, so I think now I'm going to top stitch down the side between the top of the pocket edge and the um, stitch line across the top hem. But before I do that, I'm gonna trim out a little bit more of like this extra fabric right here just to reduce the bulk a bit more. Now my pocket bag is stitched down along the top hem, and I so it's nice and flat here, but I still get that uh, volume in the rest of the pocket. Uh, before I attach the pocket flap, I'm going to mark down the pocket the pocket flap placement, and to do that, I'm just going to mark a line that's um, five eighths of an inch away from the top edge of the um, pocket. Here's the pocket flap that I sewed earlier. Um, it's interfaced with some lightweight cotton. And before I turn it out, I'm just gonna um, trim down along the curves so it's a little easier for me to um, uh, press and neaten up later. I've just finished turning out the pocket flap. Um, I'm not supposed to use heat with this fabric, um, so I've only finger pressed it, and it looks, um, I think it looks okay to me. Um, but I do think I will uh, top stitch along the edge of this pocket flap before I sew it down. I've top stitched the edge of my pocket flap, and I've also drawn um, a stitch line about five eighths of an inch away from the yellow edge of this pocket flap. Now I'm going to line up the pocket flap with my pocket and make sure it's even. And I'm going to make sure that the uh, stitching line I drew on the pocket flap matches the placement line I drew earlier. It looks like it does, so I'm just going to pin and sew down this line now. Before I top stitch down the pocket flap, I'm going to trim away the excess seam allowance here.
my first pocket is now done or almost done it just needs snaps but i'll do that at the end when it adds snaps to the entire garment um this pocket isn't completely perfect yeah there's a little bit of wobbliness here but i don't think it's too noticeable from a distance and it looks like i think head on the pocket looks even but from a slight angle you can see how this edge is a little higher than the other one uh, but overall, I think I'm pretty happy with this pocket. And uh, now I'm going to move on to showing you how to uh, sew the larger zippered pocket. So here are the pieces um, for the pocket bag or the large zippered pocket. Um, first, I'll have the actual pocket, and I've already folded in the top edge by five eighths of an inch. Uh, you'll need a zipper. This one is a little long, so I'll trim it down to size before sewing it on. And then uh, you'll need the pocket gusset. Uh, so I can't find my regular zipper foot, so or my zipper foot. So I'm just going to use my regular foot and um, try to sew carefully and not go go through any of the zipper teeth. So uh, my zipper is now attached to the zipper gusset, and the stitching you know, isn't as close to the teeth as um, I would like, but um, I'll just have to find my zipper foot later. Um, so now I'm going to attach the other side of the zipper to the pocket bag. I'm going to try and make sure that the, uh, the dots on the gusset line up with the dot or the second fold line of the pocket bag. So I've now um, finished sewing the zipper to the pocket pieces. I've also uh, sewn in the uh, pocket or the pocket dart seams, and I've also trimmed some of the excess fabric. And I folded in both the um, fold line edges for the pocket bag and um, along the pocket gusset. And now I'm going to attach um, this pocket to my front left vest piece. I'm going to use the lines I drew earlier as a guide. Um, and similar to what we did for the previous pocket, or what I did, um, I'm going to sew down each edge one at a time. But unlike the previous pocket where I only had three edges to sew down, this time I have four to sew down. So I'm going to sew across one edge, break, uh, readjust everything, sew it down that edge, break, uh, readjust, sew, etc. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then when I come back, hopefully this pocket will uh, look nice. So I've just finished sewing on the zippered pocket bag, and overall I'm pretty happy with it, although there are a few small things I'll point out. Um, I really like how three-dimensional it is, and I think it's a little funny to have a zippered pouch at your hips. Um, in terms of like overall sewing, um, I couldn't get this corner quite perfect. Um, this one's a little closer, but it's also not perfect either. Um, maybe I'll go back in and um, hand stitch this close, but I'm not too worried about making this like a completely sealed bag. Um, I also did not account for, or maybe I measured incorrectly, um, but the the zipper ended or the pocket ended up being a little wider than what I had drawn on to the um, pattern by about um, by, by about half an inch. So maybe instead of 
uh, six and a half or what was it, six inches, uh, maybe mark down six and a half inches for the pocket bag. Um, but yeah, here's the medium size pocket and the large zipper pocket. Um, and now I'm gonna do the rest of the pockets off camera before moving on and constructing uh, the rest of the jacket. All right, so I've finished adding pockets onto um, all the pattern pieces that need a pocket. So I've got my front left jacket piece here and my front right jacket piece. Um, what else? Here is my front right vest piece, my front left vest piece, and my back vest piece. So now that all the pockets are all on the pieces that I want pockets on, I'm going to move on with assembling the top jacket portion. So the facing for the jacket is uh, grown on or cut on. And so instead of having a separate pattern piece, uh, we're simply going to fold it over for the facing. Um, I also can't use fusible interfacing with this fabric because um, I'm not supposed to use hot heat with it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the facings, uh, or the, the front facings to the back facing for the jacket piece. And then I'm going to sew the uh, sewn interfacing, uh, interfacing pieces together. So here's the back facing interfacing, and here are my two uh, front facing interfacings, and then I'll sew those combined pieces to the actual jacket. I've just finished sewing the uh, facing pieces together and I finger pressed the seam open for the main jacket pattern pieces and then I just used a regular iron to press the interfacing pieces. Um, so now I'm going to line these up uh, right sides together and then sew them together.
okay, so my interfacing is now sewn in to the uh, facing pieces on the jacket portion. Um, and so when I fold the facing in, I should have this nice clean edge. Oh, I, I don't think I said this the last time I talked, but um, after I sewed the interfacing to the main fabric, I finger pressed and understitched uh, to the interfacing. And then I finger pressed again and then um, top stitched along this edge to keep it uh, looking nice and neat. Um, so this edge is a little flappy, but it'll be held down one over on this end when I sew in the hood. Of course, this one will be this end will be held down when I eventually hem the uh, jacket. Um, and there will be buttons holding uh, the interfacing down along inside here, so it won't be won't be too bad. Um, okay, so this is done. I'm now going to attach the uh, front pattern piece of the jacket to the back pattern piece uh, along the shoulder seams, and then um, I'll be back and we can start assembling the hood. So um, I've finished attaching my back piece to my front pieces at the shoulder seam, and I've also finger pressed uh, the seam allowance open. Um, and I also finished the edges of all these pattern pieces with a zigzag stitch, um, just so I don't have to do that later. Um, so I think now that my front pieces and my back pattern piece are attached, uh, I'm going to move on to working on the hood. So here are my hood pattern pieces. I have four of these side hood pieces because it will be self-lined. And then I have two of these center hood pieces. And um, three of the hood brim pieces. So the pattern uh, actually calls for two from your main fabric and two of interfacing. But since this fabric is so stiff, I think I can get away with uh, a self-interfacing for the brim. Uh, the first step for the hood is to sew some uh, reinforcement or basting stitches along the edges of along the edges of the side hood piece. Uh, because we'll need to clip into it to get it to fit onto the um, curve of the side hood piece. So I think I will just um, yeah, I'll base the sides the the sides of the center hood piece and then attach them to um, the side hood pieces. So I've just finished pinning the uh, center hood piece to the side hood piece, and I've clipped quite a bit along this top curve here to make sure I could get the edge to fit onto the side hood piece. So now I'm going to simply sew it down. Here is the center hood piece attached to the side hood piece. Um, and now I'm just going to finger press the um, seam towards the center. And then I'll repeat the process for the other side of the hood. And then I'm just going to sew um, another hood piece entirely. And then um, we'll check back in. So here are my two uh, hood pieces. On one of the hoods, I pressed the seam allowance um, out to the side hood pieces. And on the other one, I push them um, in, or well, no, this one's out. Yeah, so this one is towards the center hood pattern piece. And on this one, I push the seam allowance away from the center pattern piece. And then that way, when I sew them together, the seam allowances aren't stacked. Um, and it'll be a little, a little smoother and less bulky. Um, uh, now I want to sew the brim pieces 
each pieces together. And the first step for that is to uh, simply sew along this long curved edge. Um, from there, I think I'll trim into this uh, curved edge and then turn it out and maybe do a few rows of uh, top stitching. So I've finished my brim piece and I've uh, top stitched it a couple times along the uh, further curved edge. And now I'm going to sew it to the head piece. I'm matching the notch and the uh, dot markings on the hood with the one that's on the brim. Uh, so I made a mistake. Um, I should have basted the brim to the first hood piece uh, within the same allowance instead of just sewing it on the same allowance. So I'll unpick this real quick, uh, baste it, and then sew on the other hood piece. My brim is now attached to the first hood piece, and I think this, uh, I'm gonna make this hood piece the top side. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, sew on a small uh, buttonhole for a drawstring along the hood later. So brim is attached. I have a little uh, buttonhole that I'm gonna use as an opening for the drawstring channel later. Now I'm going to sew the two hood pieces right sides together along the entire uh, long front edge, so or the, the center and then side edges. I'm going to leave, and then we'll attach the uh, neck opening to the jacket when I'm done with that. All right, so I've finished sewing my two hood pieces together. Um, I've turned it out and I've finger pressed 
the edges and I've pushed out and finger pressed the corner or the corners. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is so um, I think like maybe an inch away from this edge to create a channel for uh, the drawstring. And then um, I can move on to attaching this to the jacket uh, portion. I think that if I were to do this over, um, I would, I would, I think instead of sewing around the entire edge, I'd probably only sew around like maybe a portion of it, like maybe just this area right here between the curves on the uh, hood piece. That way I could um, spread it out and then understitch the um, the brim and the inside hood piece. And that will that would probably help keep it from uh, turning out. I think it's fine for this fabric because again, it's like quite stiff. So I don't, I'm not too worried about the seam um, rolling out. Uh, but depending on your fabric, maybe you might want to consider doing that for your hood piece. Here's my hood piece. I've finished sewing in um, a channel for the drawstring. And now I'm going to attach it to the jacket pieces. So I've stay stitched around the entire neck edge of both the uh, jacket and the facing. And what I'm going to do now is match this raw edge corner of the hood to the fold line of the jacket. And then I'm going to sandwich the hood between the jacket and the facing. Now I'm going to match everything up along the uh, notches and shoulder seams and center, uh, centers, etc. And then sew it all up. Okay, so I've just sewn that jacket, hood, facing, sandwiched together. I'm just going to take a look at it real quick. See how it looks from the other side. It looks okay. I don't see any puckering or any. Ooh, actually, I see it a little bit. So here's one small mistake where there's a little bit of puckering here. I don't think it's a big enough deal for me to go back and unpick and fix. So I'll just leave it. Um, you know, it's like inside anyway, so it's not exactly visible. So I think what I'll do now is I'm going to trim down this edge with uh, my peaking shears, uh, this edge right here. And then I think I will finger press the seam flat, or sorry, that was in view. Um, I'm going to use my pinking shears to trim down this long edge that I just uh, sewed. And then I'm going to finger press it um, as much as I can. And then we can get started on the sewing the sleeves. So here's what I have of the jacket so far. Uh, here's the front side, the back side, and here is one of my sleeve pieces, uh, back side, front side. And um, instead of sewing up the side seam of the jacket and the sleeve seam of the sleeve and then joining them together, I think I'm going to join the uh, sleeve to the um, jacket first and then do one long seam uh, down the sleeve and down the uh, side seam of the, of the jacket. Um, and I'm going to do that because there should be no ease in the sleeve cap of this, so it should be pretty easy to match up with the, um, the arms eye and I won't really need to ease anything in. So here is my sleeve seam. It looks good so far. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll have to eat my words about ease stitching because there is a little bit of puck. Well, I don't know. It's not that bad. Like a little bit of puckering here, but I don't think that looks too bad. So. What I'm going to do now is uh, trim down the seam allowance and then a zigzag along that raw edge so it doesn't fray too much. 
and then press the seam towards the sleeve. Um, I'm going to repeat the process with the other side of this jacket and then move on to sewing down the side seams. All right, so my sleeves are attached. So here's front side, the sleeve, and then the back side. So what I want to do now is make one long seam from the jacket hem all the way down to the end of the sleeve hem. And I'm going to match notches and this uh, armpit seam and the uh, hems of both the uh, jacket and sleeve to make sure that everything is that everything lines up. So I'm going to sew this down now and then I think I'll finger press the seam open and then uh, move on to hemming the sleeves and the uh, bottom hem of the jacket. Here is the uh, jacket with the uh, sleeve seam and side seam sewn, sewn down. It's starting to look like something. Uh, so first I'm going to hem up uh, the sleeve hems and it's pretty straightforward. I'll just fold in the raw edge by about a quarter inch and then fold it in um, another inch and then edge stitch down like, along that first fold. Um, so I'll do that real quick and then come back and then talk about how we're going to hem the, the bottom of the jacket. So here is the bottom hem of my jacket. And it's going to be similar to the sleeve where I just fold in the raw edge by a quarter inch, fold that in one more time by another inch, and then um, edge stitch that folded edge. Um, but I don't want to do that just yet because if I do it now, I'm going to end up having the bottom hem on top of my facing. So what I'm going to do instead is fold over my facing so that's right sides together with the body of the jacket along that same fold here. And then I'm going to sew a quarter, um, an inch and a quarter away from the raw edge, uh, from the edge of the facing all the way to the end. Um, and then I'll turn that out, uh, finger press it so it's nice and sharp, and then uh, 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 finish the rest of the jacket hem. So I've just finished sewing that edge, and if I turn it out now, See how from the inside of the jacket the facing is now over the bottom hem. So I'm going to trim away um, some of this excess fabric and then push up the corner um, and then I'll fold in the edge by a quarter inch, fold it in another inch, um, edge stitch that down and then we'll be uh, mostly done with the jacket. So here is my, uh, I finished the hem of this jacket. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Here is the inside. See how the facing now sits on top of the bottom of the hem. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. The stitching is um, mostly straight and mostly even, um, but the parts where it isn't even, I don't think are very noticeable. Um, so I think this jacket is mostly done. I still need to add on snap buttons, but I'm, I think I'll do that at the very end. Um, I might go in and top stitch uh, 
along this center edge of the jacket just to, because I think I like the look, um, but I'm undecided on that. So we'll see what I end up doing. I also still need to add in the drawstring to the hoodie, but again, I'll do that at the, at the very end. Uh, for now, I think the jacket is done and I'm gonna move on to working on the vest now. So here are my two front vest pieces. I've already attached the uh, snap buttons um, along the uh, uh, front near the neck uh, because I want uh, these to be covered by the lining layer. Um, I also think I'm gonna skip the interfacing for the um, front edge of the vest. Uh, since I'm not using a fusible one, um, it would flap around quite a bit without me tacking it down somewhere. And I think that this fabric is stiff enough that I can get away without adding interfacing. Um, but of course, it'll, that really depends on um, the kind of fabric you're using. So um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is with these two pieces is to um, attach the zipper along the um, front here, so the center front here. So I'm going to turn in the uh, edges by um, 5 eighths of an inch and then sew that to um, my zipper. Um, oh, and I found my zipper foot, so I'll be able to use it for, for this large zipper. So I folded in the front edge of my jacket. And now I want to take my zipper. I have an 18, I have an 18 inch zipper here. Um, and line it up with my vest. So I want the zipper stop to be um, about a half inch or so away from the uh, seam allowance of the bottom hem. That way when I sew it down, uh, the sort of bulky zipper stop won't get in the way. Um, so yeah, I think half an inch should be good. And if I Hold it here, line it up to make sure it's long enough. Okay, and I think it's about long enough. Here, this is where it ends, and this is where, this is the seam allowance for the neck. So if I imagine that that's gone, it looks like my zipper's just long enough. I have uh, the zipper attached to one side of my vest now. And to make sure things are even, I um, zipped up the other side. Now I'm gonna take the other side of my vest and make sure that it lines up at the bottom hem with the other side of my vest. I'm gonna screw that down and make sure the top edge is also lined up, looks like it is. Okay, so I'm going to end this real quick and then I will sew the zipper down on the other side. All right, now my zipper is in and it looks like things are even at the bottom but at the top center, it looks like my right side is like a smidge higher than the left side, or like this right side is um, a little higher than this side right here. But the difference seems to be like, I don't know, maybe about a quarter, maybe less than a quarter. That's about a quarter. No. Yeah, about a quarter inch. But I don't know. That doesn't seem like a big difference. It seems like something I can fix when I sew down the next seam, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, now that the zipper is on, I'm going to attach the front piece to the back, uh, or the front vest pieces to the back vest piece along 
the shoulder seams, and then I'll press this flat and then move on. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to attach the back to the front just yet. Um, I'm actually going to attach the uh, side seam pockets to the uh, front and back pieces um, between the um, pattern markings. So here's one dot, and here's another dot. So I'm just going to do that for uh, both sides of the back and each side of the front. Um, I'm going to do those now because I think it'll be easier to do while uh, um, they're separated than um, later when they're attached by the shoulder. So here um, I've attached the um, side seam pocket bags onto both the front pattern pieces and my back pattern pieces. And I've simply finger pressed the pocket bag, um, the seam towards the pocket bag. And now I'm going to attach the um, front and back pieces together along the shoulder seam. Okay, I've just finished sewing the shoulder seams of the front and back chest pattern pieces together. And before I sew up the side seams and pocket bags or anything, I'm going to um, get started on uh, the lining. So for the lining, I'm just going to sew it along the shoulder seams before I start attaching it to um, my vest. Here is the um, lining that I've also attached only at the shoulder seams. And for this next step, I want to attach the lining to the uh, vest um, along the bottom hem. And then once I do that, I'll move on to attaching it along the neck hem and then along the um, along the armholes. Um, and once those those things are done, um, I'll work on finishing up the side seam. Here is my the back of my vest attached to the back lining piece. Um, I don't think I said it before, but I also understitched it that way. When I hold it in, hopefully the lining won't uh, roll out and be very visible. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing for the front of the vest and the lining pieces for the front as well, and then I'll move on to working on the the neck. Okay. My lining is now attached to the vest, but only at the bottom hem. And I've also understitched the seam allowance towards the lining. So now I'm going to do the same. Oh, and I've also double checked to make sure that um, nothing is twisted around or anything. Uh, so now I'm going to sew up the neckline. 
Uh, so I'm gonna make sure the, sh the shoulder seams match, the centers match and everything. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I sew it up, understitch it, and then I will move on to working on the um, armholes. Okay, so now my next seam is um, attached to the lining and I've also understitched it. Um, um, and I think that I sh probably should have snipped into the curved parts of the neck before um, understitching, but I'll do that later um, before I officially um, turn it all, all out. Um, so now I'm going to do the same thing for um, each armhole, and then we can finally um, uh, sew up the side seams. All right, so now the lining is attached to the vest with um, the seam also understitched. Uh, I also want to point out a mistake I made. So you can see how the lining doesn't quite meet the edge of the vest, and I think I cut out the fabric a little too small. Uh, luckily for me, the difference was less than the, than the seam allowance, so um, it, it worked out. So now I'm going to turn the vest uh, right sides out, um, and I'm going to do that by taking the front side of the pattern, maneuvering it through the shoulder seam, and then pulling out both sides through the same uh, side seam allowance on the back. Okay, my vest is now turned um, out, and now I'm gonna work on finishing up the side seam. So to do that, I'm gonna turn this around, match the vest uh, facing pieces right sides together, and I'm gonna match up the armpit seams and the pocket seams. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a little bit above the actual main fabric. I'm going to start maybe like up here on the lining. I'm going to sew all the way down to the pocket and then sew around the outer edges of the pocket and then sew down to the hem, making sure they match at the end. And then I'll go down another couple inches or so. OK, I've just finished sewing up the, uh, or part of the side seam. So here is the inside of the lining. And then I went down the side seam around the pocket, and then I continued down the rest of the side seam. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, repeat this for the other side of the vest. And then I I'm going to finish up the vest by slip stitching the side seam closed on both sides. I'm gonna slip stitch the, um, the front of the lining down to the zipper. And then I will, ooh, actually before I do that, I'm going to press the fabric towards the front or the pocket fabric towards the front. Um, and then I'll start uh, cleaning up the uh, edges, like the armholes, the neck edges, so they look a little nicer. So I'll just probably do some finger pressing and then maybe some top stitching. Um, and I th think that'll be it for the vest. No, I still need to add on the um, snap buttons. So I think I'll just finish up the rest of this and then come back when everything's done. OK, I've just finished applying the snaps to the uh, jacket and uh, vest portion of, of this um, garment. 
Um, and I want to point out a couple of things. Uh, so first I did end up top stitching along the uh, front and bottom hem of the jacket portion. Um, I also marked out the snap placements for the jacket um, on the um, outside, but I ended up placing them um, inside on the facing. Um, you can do whatever you want, but I, I decided I wanted, wanted it to match what um, I had made on the pattern envelope. Um, for the, oh, also I applied my snaps outside so there's like some like dirt or whatever on the pattern now, like there and there. Um, so I'm sad it's a little dirty before I got to wear it, but I guess this is supposed to be an outdoor garment, so it doesn't really matter. Um, here is the um, the vest portion of the garment, and the snaps on the buttons and along the center are different sizes because I didn't have enough of the same size for the entire garment. Um, I think that's all I need to do. Um, oh. No, I still need to add in the drawstring, and then um, I'll finally be done with this jacket. Okay, here is the finished jacket. I think the D-ring is a little low because it kind of peeks out from under the jacket portion, but overall, pretty happy with it. So here's the front view, side view, back view, um, and I hope you uh, if you're making this jacket, you found this so long useful. Um, and if you do make it, feel free to tag me on Instagram.